Okay, here we are. We have a cylinder CD of this assembly is going to be heated from 30 degrees to 180 degrees. That's a big temperature change using electrical resistance. So we have positive and negative. So using resistance, we're going to heat this up. At the lower temperature, there's a gap between C and the rigid bar of 0.7 millimeters. Determine the forces in rods A, B, and D, F caused by the increase in the temperature of the coil of the cylinder. The rods A, B, and E, F are made of steel. They have a cross-sectional area of 125 millimeters squared. C, D is aluminum, has a cross-section of 375 millimeters squared, and then it gave us all of the information. So as we heat this up, it's going to want to push up. Okay, which means it's getting pushed back down on. So you can see that that's going to cause it to be in compression. Okay, it's pushing up. We're going to be pushing back down. These are going to be in tension. This is going to be pushing it up. These are going to be in tension. Okay, and they're not growing very quickly. So it's actually going to put this, like I said, back into compression. So if we want to determine like equilibrium, we want to look at equilibrium of the system. then I know that force CD is pushing up as it's growing, which means we're pushing back down on it. And I know here that the force in AB has to equal the force in uh, EF because of symmetry, but they're going to be in tension, okay? They're going to be in tension because F, if we cut it, then we're pulling up. Remember if we're pulling up on the bar? Okay, this would be pushing down on the cylinder, and this would be pulling up on that bar. So you can see tension, compression, tension. Okay, so now let's look at our deformation. So let's start with AB. And it doesn't matter, we can get AB or EF. We don't want to combine their uh, change in lengths because they are symmetric um, and we just need to look at one. So if I look at AB, it's starting out like this. Okay, it's starting out like this. And I'm going to use blue. As I am pushing up on this rod, this bar right here is going to want to get longer. Okay, it's going to want to increase in length. So I have delta AB. And I have to recognize that delta AB also equals delta EF. So it's going to want to expand. Okay, now I know that it really can't expand all the way up because we have this coil it's pushing. The rods are going to be pulling. So this coil has a gap of 0 0.7 millimeters. And if I could, if I were to heat this rod up, let's just draw the height over like this. If I were to heat this rod up, it's going to take it, it's going to close that 0.7 millimeters. It's going to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow indeterminately. Okay. So it's going to want to grow up to here. But we have that compressive force that's happening back within our system. So this is our delta of CD due to thermal. Okay, it's increasing, but it's a compression member. It's being smushed. Compression means it's going back down. So we have, actually have a delta CD from that internal force. Okay, so if we look at our picture, if we look at our picture, and let's just take a different color to color in here, and I just kind of move this blue over right in here. Okay, then I can see that this blue equals, it equals this whole distance we could expand by thermal minus the gap minus the compressive force that's wanting to push it back down. Okay, so when we look at that, if we look at that green over here, that green is delta AB. Okay, over here, it is all of that delta CD due to that thermal expansion, okay, 
but then we have to minus off that 0 0.7 millimeters, which we're going to need to change that to meters, and we're going to minus off that internal compressive force of CD due to that internal force. And then we would have both of these having matching that, that kind of a green line. So delta AB is not being heated. It is in tension. It is fully going to be the force that's developed within AB. Okay, totally the force that's in AB. It's going to be the force in that steel. So let's look at this. So we have the force in the steel, the length of the steel, the area of the steel, the modulus of elasticity of the steel equals, okay, delta from temperature change. So we have alpha, delta T, L. Okay, alpha, it was told us up here, 23. Well, actually, we're going to do all this in variable form first, just so that we can see what we are working with, okay? Just so we can see what we're working with. So we have alpha of the aluminum, delta T of the aluminum, length of the aluminum, minus, okay, 0 0.7 times 10 to the negative third, because we have to get that into meters, minus that compressive force that's within, okay, within this column, the center column now, so we have the force of compression, um, force of CD, okay, length of CD, area of CD, and E of CD. So now we can go back in and we can start um, plugging in, plugging in all of our forces or all of our, our knowns. So I have the force of the steel, okay? The length of the steel is 0.3 meters. The area of steel, okay, it's gonna be uh, 125 divided by 1,000 um, times 1,000. I need to figure out how to write either way, way smaller or give myself a lot more space. Okay, so we said 125 millimeters squared, so I have to divide it by 1,000 times 1,000. There we go. And then we have the steel. We have 200 gigapascals, and a giga is times 10 to the ninth. So we now have everything in Newton per meter squared. Okay, we have newtons and meters squared equals, okay, 23 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree Celsius. We are heating it from T2 is 180 degrees minus T1 is 30 degrees and it has a length of 0.24 meters, okay, minus 0 0.7 times 10 to the negative third because we have to be in meters minus the force in CD times the length of CD, 0.24, divided by the cross-sectional area of CD, which is 375, but we've got to get those thousands out to get it back into meters. And then we have times 70 times 10 to the ninth gigapascals, which is a Newton per meter squared. So if we look at all of this, if we look at all of this, we have correct units and we have everything in here that we need, 10 to the ninth. So now I'm going to work on trying to simplify this nonsense, okay? So over here I have 0 0.3, I have 125, 1,000 divided by 1,000 divided by 200 e to the ninth times and divided by, and I get this very, very, very tiny number, force of steel times 0 0.1234567. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2. Equals 23 e to the negative 6, 180, enter 30 minus 0.24 times times, and then 0.7 e to the negative third minus. And then I have 0.24 
375, enter 1,000, divided by 1,000, divided by 70 e to the ninth times, and divided by. So 0 0.000128 minus 9.14286 times 10 to the negative ninth FC. So we have our force in our steel, and we have it as it relates to the force in the coil, which I guess I really ought to call, well, we can call it CD. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So now we need to go back and we never finished our summing forces in the y direction. And I'm going to have that FAB minus plus FCD minus FEF equals zero. And by symmetry, FAB equals FEF. So FAB times 2 equals FCD. And when we do that, we're going to come back in and plug that in here. I'm going to recognize that 2 times, that's the steel, <laughs> equals FCD. So let's just take this FCD right here, and we're going to have F of steel, 0 0.00000012 equals 0 0.000128 minus um, FCD is 2F steels. 9.14286 times 10 to the negative ninths times 2F steel. And let's simplify that more now. So we're going to multiply that by 2. I'm going to swap this out. I'm going to drop that number because it's an easy one to pick back up. If this is negative, when I take it over to the other side, it's going to become positive, and we're going to add those. Okay, so now I get that force in the steel times 3.02857 times 10 to the negative 8 equals 0 0.0010128. I'm going to take the reciprocal of that and multiply it by 0 0.000128 times. And I get a magic number of the force in the steel equals 4226, 4226. And if I think about my units, this is in Newtons, okay? So the force in the steel is actually 4.226 kilonewtons. Now, if we go back and look at our equilibrium right up here, okay, so now using equilibrium, I know that the force in the steel equals 4.226 kilonewtons, which equals um, the force in both of those, A, B, and C, D. And then the force in C, D equals... Okay, two times that, two times that. So two times is eight, four, five, two divided by a thousand, and I get 8.453 kilonewtons. And then of course, what I have to check is yielding to make sure that these equations we used are valid. But there's how you set that up. Um, we could also go back and figure out the stress because we know the cross-sectional area. Um, we could use Poisson's ratio, and we could figure out the change in cross-sectional dimensions. So there's a lot we could do from here on out.